Hi there, Bob here with JD Squared. Thanks for tuning in. This is a video in the series of how to install and operate our XR6 or XR12 rotary cutters. In this video, we're going to be specifically talking about the coolant system. That's the coolant that we run through the tubing while we're cutting. And in case you didn't know, the difference between cutting with coolant and without coolant is night and day. You always want to run coolant if you possibly can. So, with that in mind, we kind of made it a standard feature on all of our rotary cutters. It's that important. Anyway, what you see behind me right here is an XR6 that we are now installing um, in order to demo it. We have an XR12 over there that they're actually operating right now. There's about three guys over there running one. But we got this machine here. We've got the main section has been installed. And I thought this is the perfect time to show you guys about the coolant system. So without further ado, Let's get on down to the business end of the machine and I'll show you where the coolant is being injected into the tube. I'm at the power head end of the machine, the XR6. Now, real quick, what I'm describing to you also pertains to our rotary attachment add-on for our flatbed tables. The coolant systems work identical across all of our machines. All right, so what we've got right here is we have a half inch OD tube that is 11 inches long and it basically fits into the cover right here and you got this little screw right here that you could use your thumb to tighten it down. You want to make sure when you install the tubing into the machine, and this tubing by the way is braided half inch ID, three quarter inch OD, just vinyl tubing. You want to use the braided tubing if you can. Now we supply all of our stuff with that tubing, but if you're ever going to replace it or do something different in the future, use braided tubing because it doesn't tend to kink as easily as the non-braided tubing. Anyway, when you install it, you're going to want the tube to hang out of the machine. Right down here, there are holes in the frame that you're going to run this hose all the way down through to the other end of the machine. You want this sticking out 27 inches roughly. The idea is that you just need enough room to be able to get this out of the cover and to install it whenever you need to do it. Now the coolant will flow from the tank and it will run down the hose, come up through here, go through the tubing and inject into the metal tubing on the other end of the chuck. That's, that's the idea. Now, in order to keep all of the tubing into place, what we've got is these little brackets right here. I'm gonna get a little closer. Hopefully the autofocus don't mess with us. You can see this little fitting right here. And they look like that right, let me get out of the way so you can see it, that right there. They basically just fit onto the tube and then you simply take your hose clamp and place it onto it and then tighten the hose clamp. Now don't over tighten the hose clamp because you don't want to compress the tube and choke it off, but you just want it snug. Now what these will do is kind of prevent the tube from being pulled into the machine right there. Now on the other end of this vinyl tube, we're going to have another one of these that will basically lock the tube in place so that it can't shift left or right. All right, that's it pretty much for this end. Let's go down and talk about the tank. We're back to the tank into the machine, which is actually the middle of the machine. There's a midsection that bolts on here, and then there's the extension. So the reservoir is going to sit between the main section of the machine and the extension on the machine. All right, as I mentioned earlier, the vinyl tube is running through a series of holes. In fact, I don't know if you can see one, but there's one right here that all the ribs have the same hole in it. So you're going to run it through it. Now, one thing that may help you out in the future, what I like to do is we're going to come out of the frame, not on the end here. We don't want the tubing coming out here. We actually want it coming out one rib inboard. And that's because this entire tank system is going to slide up under there, and I'll show you why in a minute. But anyway, what I like to do is right in this area here, just before the rib that the tube is going to come out, I like to go ahead and put a loop in it. Let me get a little short. I put a loop in the tube with a tie wrap on it. Now, the reason I do that is because we're pumping fluid up from the tank through the tubing into the chuck. Well, it'll all drain right back out as soon as you turn off the pump and you'll have to wait for it to recharge the tube every time you go to cut. However, by simply putting a loop up under the frame right there, 
this will prevent that much coolant cannot flow back. Some of it will for sure, but not all of it. So you're gonna to wanna to put a loop in it and make sure, of course, it's facing up or it'll de defeat the purpose. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna put one of those fittings on the end of the tubing and it will lock down right up under here so that your tube is gonna come out of the frame like this here. So remember, tube comes out of the second rib, not the first rib. And then once again, we'll anchor it with a clamp and one of those little things I showed you there earlier. Okie dokie. Let's get on with the, with the description of the tank itself. There are three drain points on the frame. There's one in the main section, there's one in the middle section, and there's one on the extension. There's a tube welded into the frame right here, and what you're gonna be doing is placing the short length of PVC. Now, we supply all this with the machine. It's a short length of PVC with a coupler on it. Now, this is inch and a half PVC. It's got an OD of 1.9 inches, if you're curious. Now, it will go up under the frame and basically attach onto, let me see if I can get it on, there it goes. Well, I'd have to get up under and tighten it up. But you see what the idea is. It's hanging out of the bottom of the frame, but it's above the tube. Now, the midsection has its tube placed like about this far out. That's why we have this elongated slot right here. One tube will be dropping in here. The, main, oh, the, the midsection will be dropping in here. The main section will be dropping in on this side. And then the extension will be dropping in on this side right here. Makes it very, very easy. So you're gonna to wanna to install three of these in the, in the, the individual sections. So let's talk about the tank itself before we get onto the pump. The tank is 33.7 gallons capacity. Now that is 5 eighths of an inch from the top of the lid, uh, 16 millimeters. Now it holds 33.7 gallons, which is 128 liters for my metric friends. And we're gonna to wanna to run a special coolant in it we get it from a company called Pico, spelled P-I-C-O. It's a great, great chemical. So you're gonna to wanna to do that. All right, now another thing about the tanks, I almost forgot. They're available in mild steel and stainless steel. I'm gonna kinda of tell you don't worry about the stainless steel. If you want something that's pretty, Heliarc welded, TIG welded, gorgeous, yeah, go with the stainless steel, it'll never rust. However, that Pico solution I was telling you about is gonna prevent it from rusting anyway. And stainless steel, the last I checked, had got to, for a 12 gauge sheet of five by 10, 800 bucks a sheet. So if it was me, I would not go stainless steel on the tank. However, if, if that rocks your boat or floats your boat, we do make it in stainless steel. All right, let's go ahead now and talk about the pump. Now, we experimented with a lot of pumps when we were doing this. We started off with a quarter horsepower pump. Soon as we turned that bad boy on, it looked like somebody opened a fire hydrant. Way, way, way too much coolant. So we had to put a valve on it to choke it down. Well, we choked it down so much that the pump itself would try to overheat. So anyway, what we figured out eventually is we had to reduce the amount of volume that we were running, and we ended up, believe it or not, with pond pumps. These little pumps that you buy from Home Depot for a pond, they work fantastic. They're cheap. I think this one's $27. So if it does go bad, 27 bucks, you got a brand new pump. The other pumps, a lot of those pumps do still have plastic impellers. So since we are creating a lot of fine medical, uh, metal particles and little um, balls of metal, it tends to be a little bit hard on the pumps at all. So I don't really suggest you looking at the option of going to a high dollar pump, a couple people asked me about that. And in my opinion, it's kind of a, a waste of money. Um, as far as I know, customers that have been running the machine, I think I talked to one and he said he had to replace his pump after six months of heavy use. $27 seems like a, a pretty good deal to me. I would stay with the pond pumps. Now this, believe it or not, is the smallest pond pump that we could get from Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that. They make slightly larger ones, but when we put the bigger ones in, we ran right back into that problem where we were flowing literally too much coolant through the tube. Anyway, we supply it with this pump right here. Just thought I'd let you know where we get them from. Now, the idea of the pump is, what we're gonna do, we're gonna place it on the end of the braided hose right here, 
and I probably need to bring the camera in a little closer, and we are simply gonna put it inside the tank. Now, you don't really want the pump to rest on the bottom of the tank because as I mentioned, you got all that debris from plasma cutting that is gonna be running, flowing into this tank eventually. So what we like to do is essentially take the hose here and using a three quarter inch electrical conduit clamp, we will put this in and by using this clamp, we could clamp this and by cutting the tubing to the right length, we can kind of make it to where when it hangs off, let me see if I could show you this. When we hang off the frame right here, it's gonna dip down into the tank, but it is not gonna to go to the bottom. We're gonna let it hang off the bottom about two inches. Now, once I slide this whole tank up under there, you can see where we've got a lot more room in order to accomplish that task. Now to do that, let me slide it back out. You're gonna use a six millimeter or a quarter inch screw with a flange nut, and you're gonna fasten it in just like that right there, tighten it up and away you go. Now, normally the tank is installed after all of the sections have been placed in the machine. I just went ahead and showed you this particular setup right here because it was easy to see. Um, that is pretty much it. Now, from a maintenance point of view, I already talked about the pumps. If it does go bad, $30 later, you got a brand new pump, you're off to the races. The coolant, the water will tend to evaporate out of the coolant, not the coolant. So when generally what you're gonna to wanna to do is when you, re, when you replenish the tank because vibra, uh, evaporation will deplete the tank, you're not gonna to wanna to keep adding the green fluid with the water to the tank. Generally all we add is just pure water. Now we monitor the quality of the coolant that's in there um, I forgot what the gauge is, it's a little gauge you could buy, but basically we do it by the feel of the coolant and the looks of the color. If it's too dark, you got too much coolant, not enough water. If it's very light, you got the opposite problem. So anyway, that's how you would keep replenishing your tank. Now to replenish it, don't pour the water into the tank itself, don't get a funnel and all. All you gotta do is pour it into either in the midsection or whatever, and it will flow into your tank, and then as you run it, it'll mix it. Anyway. That's really all I've got for you on how to install and operate the coolant system. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye.